Welcome to Tough Talk. Join the conversation with Kiwi men as they tell their stories and talk about what they do for me time, what it takes to be tough on the inside, and how to be a good mate. Kia ora Machu. Kia ora Sam. If we could um, start off, are you just telling me a little bit about your story? Okay. Um, kia ora ko Machu te huki ahau. He uri no Ngāti Kahununu me rangi tāne ki te Wairarapa. Uh, my name is Machu te huki. I come from the Wairarapa region, a little town called Masterton. And I'm a descendant of Kahununu and rangi tāne people from that region. And uh, I've lived in Christchurch and now I live in Kapiti where I'm now teaching kapahaka and I'm a musician as well. So it was my mother, um, thank you mama, who sent us to a Māori boys boarding school and sort of set us on a path of discovering our culture and our language. So growing up in New Zealand and you said you went to a boys school, did you face any challenges? You know, a lot of our, a lot of our young men don't have the best role models, and I was growing up in in a school where there was a lot of uh, heaps of testosterone everywhere and lots of bullying going on because people are suiting themselves, and it was a school where you got your your power from kapahaka or rugby, and I was pretty useless at rugby, so luckily I could sing, combined with being really painfully shy. So as a really shy young man, I found that I was missing out on a lot of opportunities. I would always stand back and play it safe to protect myself from getting it wrong or making a fool of myself or being rejected. And through my performing arts, through kapahaka, and I was singing in bands at quite an early age, around 19, 20 years old, I think I just got more and more comfortable being in front of people. Mm. So, it's your, so your passion actually allowed you to address um, what you're finding difficult, you know, that, that anxiety or, you know, in social situations, you managed to use what you really loved and to, to overcome it. The kapahaka really did help me. It helped me get out there, it helped me be in front of people, it helped me connect with my culture, which I just since that time have developed a real appreciation for for what it offers me and um, what I see it can offer the, the young people that I teach. Mm. I think I was in my 30s where somewhere like a, light, a lightning bolt hit me and said, your path is to be a musician. And it was such a relief because mm. I had no idea what I was up to. I already had a couple of children at that stage and didn't really know what my passion in life was about. And then when I was even though I'd been singing in bands for a while, just covers bands and that never really fulfilled me. When I got that music was my path, I settled into that and that's when I started writing my own stuff. And that has evolved over time. There was a while where I was writing angry songs, I was writing protest songs, I was pointing fingers at politicians and corporations and complaining about things that I didn't like. The next phase was letting go of that and writing songs about how I would like things to be and the work that I'm doing on myself. And the songs are about development, they're about being in integrity, they're about uh, growing, they're about looking inwards. So that really put me into positions where people would look at me in, as, a, at a, as a leader in mm. certain environments. and. I suppose I just chose to step into that role. So now when I perform at festivals, I also run workshops on, uh, I do haka workshops, I do workshops that use different Māori protocols and practices to help us be certain types of people. Mm. And I also do some uh, stuff around masculine, feminine sexuality as well in my workshops, which is a big part of uh, something I'm interested in. 
I think I'm interested in that too. Um, I'd love to hear some more of your thoughts about it. Okay, so as a young man with the role models and the images that I was uh, offered uh, through media and television and all that sort of stuff, I had no idea how to be a young man and I had no idea how to understand women mm. uh, or how to appreciate them uh, properly. Mm. So I look back now and I cringe at uh, how I was as a young man because I had no idea. And you know, I had a, I've got a good dad and he was, a, he was a good strong man but we didn't talk much about what it was to be a young man or to be a man at all. And when I left home, some of the guys I came across as role models, I wouldn't say we were necessarily the most positive role models on being a good man. Mm. Uh, so how did you how did you learn? How did I learn? Mm. By my mistakes mm. and by feeling the impact of those mistakes. So one other thing that things that really draws me to take action to improve myself is feeling the impact of needing to. And quite often that might be sitting in a moment of contemplation or in a moment of conflict or whatever where I can feel that I have acted in a way that has not served someone, uh, that I could have done something better, that I could have done something differently, and then feeling it not trying to deflect that feeling because quite often the feeling is uh, very unpleasant mm. and can hurt me and can just feel horrible mm. and quite often in the past I might have uh, deflected it or numbed it or found a way to avoid that discomfort mm. and what I've learned to do is to sit in the impact of it and feel how yucky it is and use that as motivation to shift my behavior mm. and shift my, my um, way of being with that particular issue. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, sit with that. Mm. Mm. Feel it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, another great thing that I learned was I don't want to rely on my partner to be who I would like her to be so that I can feel the way that I'd like to feel. That was really important for me to realize that if I want anything to shift, then I need to do the shifting internally. And that usually shifts things externally around me and my, uh, my world outside of myself. I've been hearing that. It's got to come from within. It's got to, we've got to own it and, you know, and do what we can do and not try and control everyone else. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that was a big part and I really started working on me and I started developing my masculinity uh, where it wasn't a go with the flow um, sort of soft man and it wasn't this macho tough guy, it was finding the space in between where I can be dependable, I can be solid, I can be funny and uh, to also be gentle and delicate as well. Mm. And the interesting thing is I'm finding, what I'm really finding attractive in, in the feminine these days is the combination of power and uh, beauty. Mm. And I, from what I'm getting, that's what women find attractive in a man is the same as power and like a softness and a, and a mm. beautiful flow as well. Mm. And so it's, it's interesting that they're so compatible with each other. So one thing I've been hearing is, um, you know, as women find their, their power and find their strength, it sometimes becomes more easy for a man to then be more gentle and to, to be more vulnerable or talk more about how he's feeling. Um, is that something you've found um, in your own relationship? I think what I've found in my relationship is when my, my partner sees me as a strong, uh, dependable man that she can trust, then when I have my moments of vulnerability or if I'm collapsing or 
the inner child is coming through, she's going to have more compassion and empathy for that side of me if she knows that there's another side that mm. she can rely on. Mm. My current goal in my relationship with my partner is to learn to stand amongst all of her weather patterns. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's the biggest mission I've ever taken on in life mm. because I'm in awe of the power of women. I've, I've always been attracted to the beauty of women and sometimes a bit repelled or scared of or just not interested in all the other stuff that can come with being in a relationship with a woman because sometimes it can feel like hard work. It's awesome that I've got my 17 year old son living with, with me at home because um, we're, we're teaching each other a lot and we're we're both living with this powerful Italian woman in our home. Mm. And every now and then she'll say something and one of us will collapse and the other one will sort of, you know, witness it and support each other through it and also encourage the other one to not take things personally mm. and things like that. And of course, we've got an eight month uh, baby watching the whole show as well. Mm. So he keeps us on our toes and we want to show him how to, how to find that balance. I think that's important too, um, talking of support, you know, as men to support each other in, um, in facing these, these challenges um, with our partners, relationships, um, whoever. Um, that sounds like really, we can't just always do it alone? I don't think we want to do it alone or put all of our stuff on our partners. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why myself and a handful of local men gather once a fortnight on a Monday for two hours around a fire and we check in and we talk about different issues and themes and subjects that are coming up for us and that feels like a really healthy place especially with fire there that seems to be such an important element and we share what's going on for us and we disclose things that we might not want to share with our partner or with our work colleagues and it gets really honest and it gets really raw and there's tears and there's a lot of laughter and there's a lot of nodding when someone says this is what I'm dealing with. Can we all relate uh, to it. Eh? Yeah, we can all relate to it and just sharing and knowing we're not the only one dealing with stuff uh, is really healthy. So that's a big part of supporting me in my journey uh, is being part of such a group. Mm. Yeah, And learning to really make the most of the male friends in my life. Mm. Another thing I'm interested in is what we can do as individuals um, for ourselves. Um, you know, like me time, things that make us feel good, um, that just energize us and give us well-being. Is there anything else you do um, aside from music? So I've claimed these three hours and I claimed an hour for my body, which involves exercise or it could be walking on the beach or it could be getting a massage um, Pilates on the mat at home while stuff's happening around me so that's one hour for my body an hour for my music development which is really important I've, if I let that slide I feel like I'm not progressing as an artist as a musician and the other hour is uh, I have a lot of projects going on that need me to sit in front of a computer or read things and uh, communicate with people. And I call that my happenings, my happenings. Mm. Instead of admins, my happenings, because I want to think positively about sitting in front of a computer. Mm. So I claim those three hours and I have to really work for them. Sometimes I have to get up before everyone else to squeeze one of those hours in before I even go to work or come home and just do heaps of dishes or do as much jobs as I can so I feel comfortable uh, to, to move away and do my own thing. But when I do get those three hours, everyone benefits, I feel. Everyone gets a happier man in the house. I don't always get my three hours. And sometimes I just have to give myself the day off. Mm. It feels really good in the moment that the things that I'm fighting to have time for are things that are actually serving me. That's that's a really great stage to be at in life, you know, because in the, in the past, when I used to watch TV, I would want to have time 
to waste watching TV. But now I find that I'm wanting time to do things that are really serving me. And I still watch a movie every now and then or watch the Warriors almost win rugby league games. And uh, I do blob out every now and then as well into my nothing box. But uh, what I really buzz out on is having time to do the things that I know serve me. That, that brings me a lot of joy and satisfaction in life. Awesome. Thank you much. Sweet as. Thank you, brother. You're doing great work. Thank you. Order. If you like what you see, follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube or go to our website to sign up for email updates from me. Keep liking and sharing our videos to grow the movement. Peace.